Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. We are about to begin our program. Good evening. This is the moment we have all been waiting for. Our graduates have worked hard to become part of the class of 2022. We are here to celebrate with them and to confer upon each of them the honor of being called a graduate of the historical Paul Lawrence Dunbar Senior High School. Please stand as we receive our platform guests, special guests, and our members of the class of 2022.
Thank you for joining us in this momentous occasion. Let's give our class of 2022 a big round of applause. It will always be the class of 22 for me. We are ready to start our program. Please remain seated. Sorry, please remain standing. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and lift every voice. Please remain silent as we present the colors and pledge our allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience and the class of 2022, please be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce you to the mistress of ceremonies of the class of 2022, your senior sponsor. We know her as Ms. Lit for Lit. Miss Yates. Thank 
How are my babies? Good evening. Welcome parents, guardians, family, friends, faculty and staff, the community, our partners, and everyone who is a part of the village of class of 2022. Thank you for being a part of and welcome to this powerful, intentional, momentous, unforgettable, exciting moment. My name is Ms. Yates, AKA Ms. Lit, Lit for all things education and all things youth. I am a proud AP English teacher and the class sponsor of Class of 2022 at the historic Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and I am more than ecstatic and proud to be here. A huge shout out to our stage guests. Please stand when your name is called. Instructional Superintendent, Dr. Kimberly Martin. <laughs> Chair of the Dunbar Alumni Federation, Ms. Carrie Thornhill. <laughs> Dunbar's principal, Nadine Smith. Dunbar's 12th grade assistant principal, Ms. Shanice English. And all, Dr. Mack, our 11th grade assistant principal. We already met AP Johnson, but AP Johnson, the assistant principal of our ninth grade academy. And then I won't tell you who our other guests are, but a shout out to our other distinguished guests that are on the stage. Don't get me started talking about my young black king now. It is with great pleasure and an honor that I introduce to you this amazing, incredible woman. Leading the class of 2022 with style, grace, purpose and passion, the voice and vision for all things class of 2022, the epitome of a black queen and the essence of support in the Dunbar community, Miss Shanice English. Greetings Dunbar family and friends. It is with great honor that I present to you the graduating class of 2022. To the class of 2022, I would like to thank you for your hard work this year. This class will be etched in my heart forever. We came to Dunbar together in 2018. And look at how much we've accomplished. I would like to highlight the history we have made together from the countless athletic victories, Royal Court Queen, who just so happens to be our salutatorian, Miss Tamaje Crawford. <laughs> Being accepted into my alma mater, the great Bethune-Cookman University, Hell Wildcats. Royal Court King, Daquan Harvin, <laughs> who is our valedictorian for being accepted into Morgan State University with a full scholarship. Together, class of 2022, we have made history. This class has a strong spirit of tenacity and perseverance, and I am excited to see how these traits will continue to manifest in the legacies that you are building for yourselves. Beyond the countless stories of success, this class has shown the power of faith, unity, and accountability. I am more than confident in your ability to make sound choices and to continue to be great stewards towards one another. You are strong, empathetic, goal-driven, competitive, and you have navigated a historical pandemic gracefully. I have to say, you made it look easy. Daily, you fall through a learning curve because of the two years the world was in a virtual transition. Some of you have experienced grief from the loss of a loved one, 
Some of you experience tireless nights as a result of working to support yourselves and families. All of you took a risk to make it to this day, graduation day 2022. Please give yourselves a hand, I applaud you. Your class has served as live examples of fortitude. You fearlessly made this day happen, and without you, we would not be gathered here today. I am charging this class to continue to take risk, and as you would say, shoot your shot. Now, I know y'all thinking, AP, what are you talking about? Well, here it goes. I'm charging this class to continue to navigate this world confidently and unaffected by silos of comfortability. Get out of your comfort zone. I'm charging this class to dare to courageously build your legacy with risk that will keep you motivated, elevate yourselves, your families, and your communities. I'm encouraging you to do your research, start your businesses, experience exotic meals, learn a trade, explore in other cities, states, countries, learn a new language, apply and finish college, join the military, and simply engage in self-fulfilling, positive, and productive endeavors. The gifts inside of you all varies and will be the strength upholding the Dunbar community. You are a part of a rich legacy here at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. In 2011, Mark Zuckerberg gave an interview at a startup school in California. During the interview, he said, in a world that is changing really quickly, the only strategy guaranteed to fail is not taking risk. We know the 33-year-old Mark Zuckerberg as the CEO and founder of Facebook, but guess what? The beginnings of Facebook started when he was only a sophomore in college, which is only about two to three years older than what you are now. According to Policy Genius and Economic Blog, Facebook had a revenue of $27 billion in 2016. Can you imagine how much Facebook has grossed in revenue since then? Taking risk allows you to execute your visions and dreams. Take your skills, no matter the depth, and magnify them. It is okay to be extra about you. That is what we call confidence. The risk you take should be positive, productive, and impactful, allowing you to make a lasting impression on the world around you. Your school leaders, teachers, community members are all evidence of taking risk. I would like to reflect on a few notable risk takers in our community. Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, a, philanthrop a philanthropist who founded Bethune-Cookman University on a city dump with only $1.50 and four little girls during the Civil Rights Movement. Bethune-Cookman University today has an estimated population of about 3,000 students. Our very own Principal Nadine Smith, a native of Jamaica, has relocated her life to serve the students of DCPS. When she first arrived in the area, she knew no one, and in a brief time, she's graduated over 700 students, promoted over 1,000, and has mentored several DCPS staff members into positions of growth and leadership. Colin Kaepernick opted to take a knee in 2016 during the national anthem as a silent protest for social justice and police brutality. This started a movement, which made Colin a symbol of hope. In 2020, he signed a partnership deal with Disney to create documentaries highlighting social justice issues. These are just a few examples of the impact of risk taking. In closing, I want to remind, remind you that you are loved and admired. This milestone in your life is historic. And as a Dunbar family, we look forward to the change agents that you all will become. Shoot your shot, send that email, write the letter, slide in the DM. Use every resource within reach to seek mentorship, guidance, support, and begin building your toolbox and village. Lastly, while we strive daily for results and success, do not be afraid of failure. Failure is the evidence of an attempt. This attempt will afford you with the opportunity to gain insight from new experiences, understanding, and the gift of trying again. Congratulations again, and yes, Tati, Emilian, Sana, Amaya, Mia, Trice,
You all were right. I will definitely miss this class. Thank you. Sorry. Now, please join us in celebrating our students who are being recognized for special achievements this academic year. Graduates, if your name is called for an award, please stand and wave to be acknowledged. Valedictorian given to the student with the highest overall GPA in the class, Mr. Daquan Harvin. <laughs> Salutatorian given to the student with the second overall highest GPA, Ms. Tamaje Crawford. <laughs> Community Service Award given to the student with the most community service hours, Mr. Gary Murray. <laughs> leadership Award given to the student who demonstrates leadership skills amongst his or her peers, Mr. Daquan Harvin. Most improved, woo, most improved, given to the student who may have struggled but has demonstrated significant improvement in either behavior or academics. Well deserved, Miss Amaya Brooks. <laughs> Principal's Achievement Award celebrates outstanding achievement by dedicated students in the realms of academics and other contributions. He is ranked at number three in this class, Mr. Rob Ecleo. <laughs> CTE award given to a student who demonstrates significant achievements in career and technical education, Sekou Sidbury. Exceptional English Language Learner Award given to a student who demonstrates significant academic achievement and whose first language is not English, Miss Lillian Olivares Saldana. <laughs> Last but not least, Student Athlete Award given to a student who demonstrates significant achievement in the area of athletics, DCI AA. Women's Basketball Player of the Year, Miss Jalen Hunter, AKA Baby J. And this last award was given by you all to our inspirational educator, comes as no surprise. Um, voted one by the class of 2020, 2022 to the teacher who has inspired and supported them the most, your senior class sponsor, Miss Yates. <laughs> oh Lord, help me get through this without crying. <laughs> I can't. Class of 2022, it's all about you. My heart is absolutely full. Oh God, help me. This is absolutely a pleasure and an honor to receive this award. And it has been a pleasure and an absolute honor to serve you, teach you, mentor you, learn from, and experience you these past three years. My scholars, my students, my cousins, my mentees, my mentors, my headaches, my hearts, my people, my kings and queens, y'all are everything. Thank you for choosing me for this moment and for being you. Thank you for helping me understand my own child, my own teenager who will be an incoming freshman in the fall. Thank you for offering me a different perspective, showing me a different way, holding me accountable and showing me me. I get on y'all's nerves real bad. Oh, I know. I'm all up in your business. Huh, what you say? Speak up a little louder. I can't hear you. What y'all talking about? I'm talking to your parents. I'm texting and calling. Hey, parents. Hey, village. I have high expectations of you and dare you not to have them for yourselves. And y'all know y'all get on mine, LOL. But the reality is, at this point, we've become family. 
a family of love, laughter, accountability, responsibility, hard work, dedication, persever perseverance, resilience, overcoming difficult, challenging times, and absolutely lit dope times. Together we have un endured the unthinkable. Together we continue the fight. Together we have pivoted and shifted from life as we knew it. Together we are finding our new norm. Family, it has been an emotional, powerful, monumental, life-changing three years indeed. And for the last four years, you've intentionally prepared for this moment, the next chapter, the next part of the journey in this thing called life. It's the creativity, innovation, personality, advocacy, entrepreneurship, options, opportunities, next levels, and new beginnings for me. It's you for me. My athletes, my employees, my young adults who are enlisting in the military, attending trade school, joining the police academy or fire cadet program, becoming an entrepreneur or attending colleges, please know, number one, whatever you want to be, be the very best at it. And number two, have a plan. Live for today for sure. Live in the moment. But plan as if you'll live forever. And trust me, the plan will change, and that's okay, because we are forever evolving. But make sure to have a plan, period. I met you all three years ago as cute, little, young 10th graders. Our first year together was abruptly inter interrupted, and life as we knew it changed forever. We lived in and are still living through a global pandemic. We immediately dove into virtual learning, all while fighting for our lives, our people, our community, and our freedom with outspoken voices. You outspoken, creative, little advocates, you. Y'all gonna say what y'all want and y'all gonna do what y'all want for sure. And I love it, most times anyway. Remember to use your power and your words for good, kings and queens. And now we're here, back like we never left. And y'all pushed through it all, and I need you all to keep pushing. Don't ever stop pushing. Class of 2022, after today, you are officially a young adult in the real world, and with that comes a major shift. And I don't say that to scare you or throw you off, but I say it to say, enjoy this time. Don't let fear of a new experience or one bad experience allow you to miss the good experiences. Go out here and have a plan, but get into the experience. It's your time to figure it out, to network, to try new things, to go new places, to meet new people, tap into different resources, Go out into the world and create your space and your place. As you prepare to start this next chapter, be prepared and know that you will hear no's along the way. But don't stop just because you get a no. Keep going, push until you get to greatness. Release the spirit of fear, the spirit of offense, the spirit of doubt, and the spirit of not thinking that you are good enough. Remember, anything worth fighting for is never easy. Don't miss out on the great things. Fight. But before we go to the next chapter, let's enjoy closing this chapter in this moment. <laughs> Don't be so excited about the next moment that you miss the opportunity to fully indulge in this moment. I strongly encourage you to enjoy your summer. Be responsible and prepare for next levels for sure, but really enjoy this moment, this accomplishment. You will never get this moment back. Get into it. And after you take that moment to breathe and bask in the abyss, tap into the legacy, culture, the power that is, the greatness that is you. Write your own narrative, tell your own story. And as you go out here and start the new chapter, don't forget about me. Don't forget about your family here at Dunbar. I got you, we got you. Mr. Jacobs got you, Ms. Collins got you, Ms. Karima got you, Ms. Oliver got you. Miss Tiffany got you, Mr. Diallo got you, AP English got you, Principal Smith got you, Dr. Cox got you, Miss Williams got you. I could go on and on and on. The entire 12th grade team and the entire Dunbar family, we got you. We are forever a part of your village. Always stay connected and don't forget about the little people as you all go out here and make it big. But wait, you can never forget about us. You can never forget about me because we certainly can never forget about you. 
From the students that I taught for one year, two years, or all three years that I've been at Dunbar, or to my babies that I never even taught at all, but we still managed to connect and build a relationship. From now, getting on teams at 12.30 a.m., Shania Walker, because I was on there pre-recording, she just jumps online. We have in class, not at 12.30 a.m., sis. To the text, where you at? Why you not here, Miss Days, you good? Hey, Shanice. To the TikToks in the hallway, shout out to Mia, who showed me how to do my first TikTok. <laughs> Tati, AKA Lil Lit, Dania, and Emilion. We had so much fun. To the Mother's Day text, my sons, Sekou and Daquan, happy Mother's Day, Ma, you good? To standing before you and having had the honor to teach, mentor, mentor and learn from you all the last three years, and especially to Maje and Daquan. Well done, my loves. It's a big deal. Class of 2022, y'all are a big deal. Class of 2022, thank you for inspiring me, for loving me, for choosing me. Thank you for allowing me to be authentically me. Thank you for the lessons and the blessings. You have truly inspired me and forever changed me and impacted my life. My young kings and queens, go out here and be the change and the voice that you want to see and that you want to be. Congratulations, class of 2022. It's lit! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for allowing me to get through that. And now we will hear from our powerful, fearless, revolutionary leader, the epitome of a queen, the essence of black excellence. She is for the culture, for the youth, for the staff, for all things Dunbar. She continues the legacy. She leads with vision and purpose. She continues the marathon. She is the principal of the historic Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Miss Nadine Smith. How are you guys feeling? Class of 2022, you ready? Ready to step out there? All right. Good afternoon, Dunbar parents, families, faculty members, and our esteemed guests. And most importantly, the extraordinary, the unforgettable class of 2022. Let me hear y'all. <laughs> All right, so today we are here to honor you. We're here to celebrate you as you begin this new journey. But before we get into you, because we're gonna get into you heavily, Right Before we get into you, I would like to acknowledge the village that supported you in getting to this very moment. The village that pushed you to be great, the village that demanded your best. The ones that guided you through an entire pandemic. The mothers, the fathers, uncles, cousins, tias, guardians, everybody who loved you so much that they made the decision that you would be educated at the historic Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Parents and loved ones, I know it has not been easy over the last two years and a half. As a community, we have endured so much. We've endured sorrow, uncertainty, and even political unrest. But today, y'all, we celebrate. You gave us your very best. Miss Sidbury, you never faltered. Miss Campbell never faltered. Miss Kitt, you never faltered. You were relentless in ensuring your scholars were successful. Your love, your strength, your determination is why they're here today. Graduates, please stand up and applaud and honor your village. <laughs> All right.
You may be seated. I would also like to rec recognize the other members of the village, the incredible, the dedicated faculty of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Where are you folks? Wave, Dunbar team. I'd like to highlight the inspirational 12th grade dream team who have worked tirelessly under the leadership of AP English to support our seniors. In addition to our, facul our families, faculty, and staff, I'd like to acknowledge Ms. Carrie Thornhill and the Dunbar Alumni Federation. See, the Dunbar Alumni Federation continues to serve Dunbar as a beacon of tradition, excellence, and pride. Each year, the Dunbar Alumni Federation provides our students with scholarship and financial support. This year alone, the Federation has awarded over $100,000 in scholarships to our graduates, to our students. We would also like to acknowledge our community partners such as Ernst & Young and AWASH Construction, our athletic coaches, Mr. Maurice Vaughn, I don't know if you're here, Coach Vaughn, Coach Bink, Mr. Spivey, Coach Clark, Coach Singletary, and all the other coaches and community members who have been consistent in pouring into Dunbar students and pouring into the culture of Dunbar. You see, family, this village is a very strong village. Let's clap it up one more time for the village that continues to support our students. Class of 2022, you know I got some things to say to you. This is your address. It's, we're the only ones in the room right now. I want you to listen to me. Ready? All right. Class of 2022, you're truly an exceptional group of young people. You will always be special to me. We entered Dunbar together back in 2018. We were all nervous. We didn't know what the years would bring. None of us could have predicted a global pandemic, a global health crisis that would bring the world to a stop. But you see, when the world stopped, you know what you did? You kept on going. You all had to rise up and show up in a new world with these new normals and new ways of being. In some cases, you had to become new people you rose to the challenge and you showed the world the true meaning of agility, the true meaning of resilience, the true meaning of strength. You chose courage, you chose optimism, and therefore, you, class of 2022, you claimed the victory. Many of you may not know this, but you're the class that became our greatest teachers. Amaya, our greatest teachers. You're the class that was our inspiration. You were our muse. We had to relearn. We had to reset. We had to revisit and reimagine who we were as educators. We had to learn to do things completely different. You made us better. So many valuable lessons came from this class. Anthony Patrick. <laughs> Anthony Patrick. Daquan Harvin, Tykel Cutler. You taught us about perseverance. You taught us about resiliency. You taught us about character in the face of loss. It is said that adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it. And gentlemen, this year, you showed that you're young men of the highest character. Amaya Brooks and Makaya Graham. Where are you, Makaya? Amaya and Makaya, you pushed us to show up better each day and reimagine how we were going to do things at Dunbar. You taught us about possibility, you taught us about growth, you taught us about claiming space and demanding that our voices are heard. You taught us that. <laughs> Miracle Millens, where are you? Shanice Tillery. Ladies, you taught us all a lesson in the power of never giving up. 
the power of being determined and working extremely hard to achieve your goals. Congratulations, you all did it in three years. Clap it up for them, y'all. Lillian Saldana Alvarez and Jasmine Simpson, you made us all revisit the power of hard work, strong will, and determination. You showed us how we all have the ability to stretch and reach far, far beyond what folks expect of us. Taylor Webb, Taylor, where are you, Taylor? Where are you, Taylor? Taylor. I know it's been quite a year from you, young lady. You reminded us, and I want you to listen, you reminded us that wherever a beautiful soul has been, there is a trail of beautiful memories that will illuminate the past, the path that you're walking. I see that light on you, Taylor. Demi Grant, Lola Sims, Mia Gibbs. You gave us all a lesson in black girl magic. You showed up and showed out. You showed us how to live out loud and how to be free. You ladies showed up every day as creatives, brilliant, brilliant young black ladies. Dakota Delaney and Tatiana Jones. Dakota, where are you? Tatiana? Yeah, you thought I... So you, t you two ladies taught us how to be still and let the chaos of what is sometimes Dunbar move all around you. You quietly and gracefully pushed through the noise to be your greatest self. You all did it your way. Jaden, Trice, Jaden. And Jaleel Smith, Where, Jaleel, you're here? It has been a pleasure watching you grow, watching you soar so high. You taught us about passion, commitment, and using your fire as fuel. And if you've ever seen Jaden on the sidelines of a football game, you understand what I'm talking about. Gentlemen, you have only just begin, began. Clap it up for the class. <laughs> class of 2022, you have not only been our teachers, you've shown yourselves to be excellent scholars. You understood the assignment and you accomplished the mission. As a class, you have earned $5.7 million in scholarship. And this is one of our smallest classes, $5.7 million. Congratulations, Daquan Harvin, who earned the largest total scholarship with $859,000 in scholarship from 10 different universities. Whoa. Congratulations to Imani Vance, who received the largest single award from American University at almost a quarter million dollars. Congratulations to Dania Jones, who answered the call and will be serving in the National Guards. Dania, where are you? We thank you for your future service. All right, folks, we're almost done. This is a celebration. We're gonna celebrate my kids tonight. Members of this class will grace the halls of our nation's greatest institutions, our HBCUs. Amira Richard Hurley will be attending Dell State. Where are you, Amira? Tamaje will be attending the great Bethune Cookman. Mackenzie Lee will attend North Carolina Central. Some of this class, are, they're already taking their place to be the great builders of our world. Jaqual Anthony will be training to be a HVAC specialist. Kylan Benson will enter the world of construction and plumbing. Nayor Griffin will begin a career with Pepco. Class of 2022, you're already showing them, sky's the limit. In a few moments, you will enter the world as graduates of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. This is your new beginning. Take with you all your tools as you are the artisans and the writers of your future. I want you to write beautiful stories of the faraway lands that you'll visit. Write stories of the people you will meet and especially write stories of the love you will experience. Although the world is a beautiful place, there are some things that will need your attention. 
there are some things that must change, and you should know this being grads of Dunbar. We must change racism. We must change white supremacy. We must change the pandemic of injustice. We must change the pandemic of violence. We must change the pandemic of sickness and poverty. Yes, you are charged with being that change in the world, and while you're doing all that change, folks, I still need you to live a full life of love, joy, and experience. The revolution will not steal that. I know it's a heavy charge, but who else but you, the graduates of Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School? As the sun sets on your high school journey, I thank you for allowing me to be your principal for the last four years. It has been my greatest pleasure and my honor we're incredibly proud of you. You will always have a home on Endstream. Crimson Tide forever. Roll Tide. Congratulations, 22. Now I will introduce to the stage our amazing, dope, powerful student who is representing, this king is representing the Black Studies Academy. He is representing his peers, he is representing the youth and the community in addition to being a January graduate. And you know that means this king graduated early. I would love to introduce Gary Murray to introduce this year's commencement speaker. Good afternoon, everybody. Man, it is an honor to be up here with my class of 2022 and to be graduating today. And I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker, which so happens to be Ms. Tamika D. Mallory. Please, please give her a hand. For every hand, I don't know where she's at. <laughs> Tamika Mallory is a groundbreaking, award-winning social justice leader and movement strategist. Tamika has risen to become the most sought-after influential artist of her generation. Her committed work, advocacy, frontline bravery, and heroic servitude continues to fuel a solitary act into a global movement inspiring millions around the world to get involved in the fight for racial and social equity. Tamika, through the impact and gravity of her voice, speaks truth to power no matter the consequences. She is hailed as one of the most influential black voices of our generation. She served as the youngest ever executive director of the National Action Network and was instrumental in the creation of the New York City's crisis management system, an official gun violence prevention program that awards nearly $27 million to violence prevention, prevention organizations nationally. Tamika made history when she helped shepherd the largest single day demonstration, the 2017 Women's March on Washington. Serving as one of its four national co-chairs, most recently, she co-founded Until Freedom, an intersectional social justice organization that serves as a clearinghouse for organizers, activists, movement attorneys, artists, celebrities, and formerly incarcerated individuals. Tamika also co-hosts alongside raptivist My Son Lin, which if you didn't know, he made a remix for I'm Not Racist by Johnny Lucas, um, the newly launched Street Politicians podcast on iHeartRadio's Black Effect Network. Tamika has been honored as one of Time's 100's most influential people and was featured on Fortune's list of world's greatest leaders. Her deliberative vision and focus intentionally has deeply moved and motivated a new generation of spirited, engaged activists like myself. Never hiding behind a keyboard but motivated by her selfless convictions to advance freedom and equality, Tamika is a peerless streetwise lightning bolt for freedom, justice, and equality. The title of her book, State of Emergency, is, is a reflective masterpiece birthed from the urgent declaration she made 
in the opening speech during George Floyd protests in Minneapolis. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the voice of our time, the voice of our people, of the community, the youth, and of the culture, Ms. Tamika Mallory. Where's she at? Yeah. Dunbar, what's good? Y'all can do better than that. Y'all at a graduation. Folk have succeeded today. Dunbar, what's good? Oh, there's people in the house. I think I, I hear some people in the house. Sounds like there's some grandparents in here that know we made it. Do I hear grandparents in the house? Are there parents in the house that know that we made it? We did it. Where's the parents that said we did it? Are there, is there a community of teachers and faculty and those who stood by these young people here today? Let's give the faculty some love. And, mo and, and the most important of all, are there some students that made it, that are about to walk across this stage? Ah, okay, oh, oh, okay, so, so Dunbar is in the house today. It's some love in this building. Are there black folks in this building that know that in order for us to graduate, we gotta go through a whole lot of hell to get to this point? Can I just hear one more time for some black folks that's in this building today? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now I feel like speaking up in here. I traveled all the way from New York City today, took the train, arrived here, came over rushing because there was a delay with the train. I didn't come to talk to a dead crowd. I came to talk to a crowd where the bones are shaking, where people are alive, where we together have accomplished something great. Today is a great day. It represents new beginnings bright futures, hard work paying off. Success is on the horizon. Let me say it again, you made it. You made it. Mom and dad did it. Our grandparents who are in here know that it is turning around for us despite what America tries to tell us about ourselves, we are still here and we will succeed. We are worth it. And this is a great day, not just for all of you students, but it's also a great day for our community. Black America is better for this moment. And I'm so grateful for all those who played a role in the decision to have me as the speaker today, especially our principal, Principal Smith, and to the entire leadership team, faculty, all of you who are here, staff, and again, the community. It is quite humbling when I get an opportunity to stand before the brightest, the most valuable, and those with the most potential. And yes, I claim that unapologetically. Why? Because I understand coming from the same place that you come from, that in order for us to achieve what you have today, there's a lot of challenges. That it's difficult to focus and that every single day it is a fight to stay the course to be able to make it to this place. It's exciting. Because even though I understand that it's not about me, I feel like we accomplished this. 
It is the village that cries out today in a celebration of congratulations. It is our village that must come together to celebrate you all. You are undoubtedly the generation who will take over our world, and I wholeheartedly believe that among you are the greatest leaders that we've ever seen. I'm not just saying that, ladies and gentlemen. If you know anything about me, I don't just say words. I try to speak what I believe to be true. They call it speaking truth to power. It gets me in a lot of trouble, by the way. But I say that because we're sitting in the midst of a graduation for an institution that was the first to choose black people, to serve black people. That means that even if you don't want it, you are walking with something heavy on your shoulders. You are carrying something that is so powerful. In fact, the great philosopher Jay-Z once said, Legacy, legacy, legacy. Black excellency, baby, you gonna let them see. Legacy, legacy, legacy. Black excellency, baby, you gonna let them see. So you are coming from legacy. And as you have heard, I am a civil rights leader and so I believe I was invited here today to talk to you about your required responsibility to your family, to your community, and even to our world. Because you know, they try to make us small. Like we only can do a little bit of good in our community, but actually the whole world monitors our success, our likes, our trends, and they base everything they do across this entire globe on what black people are doing. Now sure, I could talk to you today about my personal story. I could tell you all that I was 18 years old when I had my son who is now 23. I now have a 23 year old son. And I could tell you the whole story of everything that I went through. I could talk to you about how hard it was. A kid coming from Harlem, someone that everyone said wouldn't make it because I was so young when I had my child. Before that, they thought I had a lot of promise. Now, I don't know about y'all, but you, you, you got black folks, so you know black folks talk about you when bad things happen to you, right? Or what's considered to be bad. You know, they, they gossip and they say, y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh, okay, y'all family members do that? Because mine did that. So when I was growing, you know, when I got pregnant, oh man, they was judgmental. Oh, she, I knew it. She talked too much anyways, too fast. She wasn't gonna, you know, she ain't gonna make nothing of herself. That's it, it was over for me. And so I could tell you all about that story of how difficult it was. And then my son's father went and, and, and he was murdered. So my son was two years old when his father was killed. So now you know they judged me. Y'all know, they was really off. Everybody was talking. And I really was not supposed to make it. And let me tell you something, it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough to be a young woman, 20 years old, came from the projects, I have a baby, I, had, I didn't graduate from high school, I eventually had to get my GED in college with a baby. It was real, real hard. And of course, I had to have a job. All that happening at the same time. So I could tell you all about that because certainly to see me standing here today as the graduation speaker, and I'm cute too, that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing, you know? So this is, this is progress for us right here in comparison to where I came from. Of course, I could also stand here and tell you about my friends. Thank God it wasn't my story, but I have my friends and I'm sure there are some of you that daddy left a long time ago that mommy has challenges, maybe drug abuse, maybe she's locked up. We could sit here and we could go on and on and on with the stories about the sexual abuse that some of us have suffered, the poverty in our communities, the challenges that we all face. We know the stories and if it's not your story, your neighbor could tell you to tell the story and you can share in the emotions and have empathy for those who have suffered with similar circumstances either to yours or, yours or someone that you know and love. But we can't live there, ladies and gentlemen, 
We cannot live in our past and even some of the bad things happening in our present. We cannot own that as our existence because this moment that we're in, the moment that you're in, being a graduate who is on your way to bigger and better things is too serious. And guess what they say? They say that success does not live in darkness. So you cannot become more successful at what you're trying to accomplish, focusing on and living in darkness. That success lives in light and possibility. That does get a clap, right? Success lives in light and possibility. So today, as you graduate, it's as much a time for reflection as it is an opportunity for action. We have challenging issues to deal with as a nation. And you, unfortunately, have now picked up the baton as someone we are counting on to help us with a cleaning, a cleansing, and an overhaul of our society. Whether it's dealing with white supremacy in Buffalo, police brutality in Louisville, Kentucky, or gun violence right here in the southeast section of DC, we need an overhaul and you all are the ones we are counting on. Whether it is access to clean water in Flint, Michigan, or housing issues in New York City, we need an overhaul and we are depending on you to be the ones to help us get there. So we don't have much time for pity. We don't have much time to sit and wait and figure it out and have time for us to rehash all the things that have happened. If you need some therapy, get it. Know that you are not crazy just because you need some help dealing with some of your issues so that you can keep going and be a soldier in our army for justice and for peace in our society. Because this is not your mama's civil rights movement. That time of those who worked hard for us to get to where we are today, that has passed. It is now incumbent upon each and every one of you to figure out what you're going to do to help our society. How can you become the next one to carry the bag, as we say, on behalf of our people? How many of you sitting here today know inside of you, you have a burning desire to make a change for what you see happening around you? And you want to, I really want to know, how many of you really, really are like, you know what, I want to make a change? But what happens with us is that when we feel like we want to be a part of the movement, we start thinking, well, I gotta get more educated. I need to go to more colleges. I need to, you know, I need to, to do something big. I have to be a world changer. And meanwhile, you're saying that you want to be in this movement to change the conditions of your people. You think you have to do something big. But the reality is that you can do something as small as not sharing a social media message that might get your friend murdered. You could do something as small as saying, I will not be a part of the beef that's happening in my community that could potentially get someone killed. That's changing the world. Even if it is removing a drink from a friend's hand to make sure that they get home safely, even if it is as much as sitting with a college application a little bit longer and pressing through the frustration so that you can help your younger family members apply one day too. That's changing the world around you. Even if it's encouraging your talkative friend like me to go to law school or to run for office and not making them feel corny because that's something that they aspi aspire to do. It literally starts with things that seem really, really small, but they are life-changing and make for a big deal in our society. Being part of a movement doesn't mean going out and fighting all of the world's problems all the time. It doesn't have to look the same as mine or anyone else's. 
It means taking small steps, making small changes that can improve your block, your school, or even just your apartment. It means being responsible, knowing that your tweet, your text, your post on social media says something about us as a people. And therefore, we need to think before we engage. It means understanding that it's not about doing what is popular, but doing what is right. It means that ain't nothing new under the sun. So I got one little thing to say that I know y'all don't want to hear. When your parents tell you something, more than likely, they know what they're talking about. A graduation means that you have strived for success and you succeeded. You're moving on to the next level in your life. It's like, I don't know, y'all might be too young, but we used to play Super Mario Brothers. And in Super Mario Brothers, y'all know about Super Mario Brothers? Oh, y'all do? Okay. All right. So, all right. See? Y'all know about it. So in Super Mario Brothers, we would play a game. The parents know about Super Mario Brothers, right? All right. They know. And each time you accomplish something, you was just trying to get to the next level. So now you beat this level, you're on your way to the next. But while you're on your way, remember that your job is to learn, to teach, to volunteer, to vote, to work, to respect your neighbor, but to damn sure if nothing else, respect yourself. Respect yourself. Now, let me tell you something. We are so caught up in a digital age of instant gratification. We want everything at our fingertips. But you need to know that going to the next level in the Super Mario Brothers, it got harder. It got harder. So this, I'm sure, was difficult. Because again, you had to focus in order to get here. But as you go to the next level, the game gets harder. So know that the instant gratification that you have become used to from our Instagram lives and our social media lives, that is not the daily reality. The daily reality is that there must be hard work in order for you to become someone that we can celebrate even more. You must decide what it is that you want to do and invest in it. And by investing in it, you must invest in yourselves. You must invest in your education. You must invest your time properly. And you must guard your mind and your spirit from things that would get in the way of you making it to the next level. That is changing the world. Not the big things, not the Dr. King life. That's a good thing too if you become that. But that's not what I came by here to tell you about today. I came by to tell you that it is the small decisions that you make that really will determine your character and how you win, not just for yourselves, but on behalf of all these people and all of us who are depending on you. Small things, small steps. Now, let me just tell you this last story, and I, I'm, I'm gone. Now, I went to Africa a few months ago. So I promised myself everywhere I go, I'm going to talk about Africa. And now I think I'm a, like an African connoisseur, right? So I think I know everything about Africa, everything. I, I was there for three weeks. And as far as I'm concerned, I am now a well-studied person who knows the whole continent. I'm not, but that's how I feel. And so while I was there visiting, I noticed that they kept showing me a lot of things about men. And I loved those things. I learned everything. I, saw, I, I learned so much about our men and the, and the kings and the chiefs and how strong they were. But everywhere we went, I kept saying, take me somewhere and show me what the women did. Because I know that in any environment where our brothers have been strong, the women have been there leading as well. And so I wanted to know, show me, show me, show me. So they took me to two places. And I want to tell you about it today as the end of my time with you. Y'all with me? Just a few more minutes. 
All right. So while I was visiting, I, I learned about these two women, and I want to leave this with you for encouragement and guidance. There's two people whose stories should remind you in your most unsure state to raise your head and push through. In the powerful memes on Instagram, it says, walk in the room like God sent you in there. You saw that, right? Walk in the room like God sent you in there. And these two stories should make you feel that you can. One is Pharaoh Hepsetshu, and the other one is Queen Yah Asentewa. Now these were some bad women. When I say bad, I'm talking about badder than bad. And I know this is a school where I can speak about this because y'all educated folks, so y'all know about what it is to be a bad woman in Africa. Pharaoh Hepsetshu was the, was the second woman to rule over Egypt. Essentially, this sister became queen of Egypt at a very young age, but nobody identified her. She was never in line. She's a woman. She had no business being the Pharaoh. But when there was a need because her husband died and his son was too young to take over, she stepped up and decided that she was going to make herself Pharaoh and everybody was just going to have to deal with it. Now, let me tell you why that's in, I heard somebody say period. Let me tell you why that's important. Because there will be times in your life when you will be sitting around waiting for the masses to deputize you as the leader and you don't have time to do that. It is your job to step up, stand up, and lead. You have a responsibility to decide the leader is in you and do it. So when they told her, said, well, you know, people don't, they don't respect you as the leader. She went out and the story goes that she found some men and she looked at the men and said, I'm best to lead this nation. And they got behind her and through her work, she was one of those who helped to bring civilization along. So in other words, she did her job. It was good for them to support her as a leader who chose to lead on her own. The next story, and I'm going to tie these two together, you're going to get it in a minute, is Pharaoh, is, is a, a, a Queen Yah Asentewa. Now, her story is a little bit different. There was a moment when she became queen, and some black folks, other Africans, excuse me, they sold her out. Because the British, while they were trying to take over Ghana, she was in Ghana, they were trying to take over Ghana, and so they were able to secure some other Africans to take her out. Don't be that guy or that girl that sells out your own people. Don't be that person. But that's not the point of my story. I just had to say that and leave that as a point right there. And so they put her in a cell. And the cell that she was in was a dark cell behind two doors with no ventilation. They would not really feed her. And the purpose of this cell is that as they pack people in there, each one is supposed to die before they take everyone out. How cruel is that? Yah Asentewa was in this cell for one year, but she would not die. She was in the cell for one year, but she would not die. Others died before her after having been in the cell for a shorter period of time. She would not die. Now, is that not the story of your parents, your grandparents, and those people in your life, and even you? That the world is trying to starve us out, sticking us in closed spaces, and yet, we still will not die. Now, let me tell you why these two stories are important. Because you have one woman who decided, no matter how difficult it may be, it is my time. It is important for me to stand up and lead. Then you have someone that says, even when I'm leading and I'm crucified, I still won't let you kill not just my body, but our memory. 
And the reason why I'm leaving you with these two things today is because as I said in the beginning, I truly do believe that the true leaders of our society is among this generation of young people. You all are bold, you are courageous, you have all the tools at your disposal. But what you cannot do is sit back and wait for the world to approve your blackness as being great. You must step up and decide it is your time to lead. And then when you are leading, know that you will not die and it is your responsibility not to let them kill those of us who fought before. We have stories of those who came before us that have laid the foundation for the sacrifice that is necessary. It is in you because you are sitting here today. And remember, you will not die. You will stand, you will succeed, you will lead, and you will lead the next generation to a better place. It is in you, it is on you, it is in your soul, it is in your stride. It is in your stride. And I know I'm not a preacher, so I'm not going to make you hoop and stand up and start shouting. That's not what I do. It is my job to implant in your mind that you have a role and the role will not wait. It is now, it is your time. Pick up this baton, take on the sacrifice and lead your people and your community to the justice that we know only you can do for us. God bless you graduates. God bless you. Go win on all of our behalf. It is the village crying out. Congratulations. It is the village crying out. Congratulations. Legacy, legacy, legacy. Black excellency, baby. You are going to make them see. God bless y'all. Go in peace. On behalf of the faculty, staff, students, and alumni, we thank you, Ms. Tamika Mallory, for speaking at this joyous occasion. A pleasure, an honor, and a huge moment in our Dunbar history. Thank you, Ms. Mallory, for being a voice for the people, for intentionally creating change for our community, and for being an example to our youth. Thank you for paving the way for our students and being the powerhouse that kicks in the door and demands space for our people and our culture. Thank you for embodying all things that we here at the Paul Lawrence Dunbar strive for and are. Ladies and gentlemen, again, please shout out for Miss Tamika Mallory. We will now have a musical selection by Dunbar High School's very own, your music teacher, class of 2022, Miss Walden.
Thank you so much for that selection, guys. <laughs> All right, it is now my pleasure to welcome and introduce to you a beautiful and brilliant young queen who has decided to attend the great Bethune-Cook University this fall, Miss Tamaje Crawford. Greetings and welcome to our family, friends, administrators, and staff. And with honorable mention, my fellow classmates. <laughs> my name is Tamar J. Crawford, and I am more than happy to be your salutatorian and to welcome you to the end of an era and the beginning of a new chapter. Speaking of errors, Throughout my journey in life and in school overall, making transition from elementary school to middle school, then into high school, I found myself over and over again. I found myself going through a crisis of needing to know who I am. And at first, especially in middle school, I didn't understand that those parts of me I began to find throughout this journey was just those bits and pieces. Leading up to what was really in store for me and the version of myself I ever saw with tunnel vision, I found those bits of trauma, hurt, confusion, love, healing, understanding, maturity, and so on. Throughout my early adolescent years, I've always felt out of place, misunderstood, and invisible. However, I'm forever grateful to have been blessed with those to guide me early on to even consider taking a journey of self-love and to understanding my worth and as well as my purpose. I'm thankful for those who saw me when I couldn't see myself and who kept me plugged in when I didn't want to keep my light on or change the bulb when I felt dim. Many find themselves still trying to understand or just beginning to go on their journey way down the road. After staring senselessly when their lives are on autopilot. Coming to Dunbar, I was given opportunities and put into position to bring out parts of me I would pray for. 
not even knowing it was already there. I've always felt like I was too timid or soft to ever lead anyone. Without realizing, I've been a leader my whole life. Being my own person, following my own rules, having an individual personality, it was always there. I just didn't believe. But Ms. Garima, Ms. Yates, Ms. Williams, Ms. Carter, Dr. Cox, they did. My sister, shout out to you, Shana. I know you're not here right now, but hey, girl. My uncles, my mom and dad, all of them did. My uncle Keith used to tease me about being one of the tallest girls in my class in middle school, to the point where I wanted to get surgery on my legs to be shorter. But he told me, that's what makes you stand out. And being different is better than being average. And it stuck with me to stand out, to be the difference, set the trend, be you. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say I didn't struggle in high school, despite of where I'm standing, because depression is very real. Fighting your own mind and anxiousness is a battle like no other. And I've dealt with sadness and feeling alone and hopeless since I was 10 years old. I've had big responsibilities when I was just a baby, so the pressure was real. Now is the first time since where I feel at ease and at peace. I feel connected again. I feel like I'm alive and I'm in love with life again. I want to be here and I'm glad that I stuck it out to the end. And I'm here making my speech today. <laughs> I've made a lot of sacrifices and I've been focused on preparing for my life and I don't regret it because I did it. We did it. <laughs> and I know I haven't gotten a chance to know and experience all of you, but I'm glad that I was able to interact with you all because I know each and every one of you will be great. These last few weeks of schools, sorry, <laughs> these last few weeks of school have been great and the people I've began to build bonds with are amazing and I can't wait to see our relationships grow and to help each other on top. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. A wise man said, show me a circle of friends and he can tell me your future. I'm so sorry, y'all, I skipped the line, I gotta. <laughs> However, <laughs> before I leave you all today, I just wanna say it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to ask for help. We all need somebody to continue to push us and keep us grounded and to remember what's important. If you wish to succeed, cut out those who don't allow with what you want for yourself now. It's gonna hurt, but it'll all be worth it five, 10 years from now. And if you wait for those people to get on your level, you'll be waiting forever. Living at the bottom when your heart is at the top, Obedience is greater than sacrifice. A wise man said, show me your circle of friends that he can tell you your future. If you're hanging around a bunch of bums, you'll move and you'll think like one. You hang around a bunch of billionaires, you know the rest. So whoever just came to your mind, you know what you need to do. You can still have fun and be focused if you have a genuine circle. If you say you want better and they try to speak fear into your future, then you know. The time is now. Be great. Thank you. Congratulations, class of 22. But don't cook me, here I come. TC out. Oh, Lord, thank you so much to Maje, T.C. Crawford. It's the queen for me. All of that, all of the things, all of the things. Can y'all please stop texting me while I'm up here talking about me crying? Mind your business and pay attention to what you're supposed to be doing. Because I'm about to cry again. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the podium. Oh Lord. 
This young king has worked extremely hard and overcame life-changing, major challenges, obstacles, and realities to earn the top spot. The epitome of a young, queen, young king, Daquan Harvin, who will be attending Morgan State University on a full ride in the fall. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> Let me speak. Good evening, everyone. My name is Daquan Harvard, and I'm blessed to be your valedictorian for the class of 2022. <laughs> Special thanks to all the parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, and grandparents that came out today to celebrate the young souls who finally could put a check mark on a major milestone today. I'd also like to thank the amazing Dunbar alumni for their presence today and their continuous support. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge the graduating class of 2022 for their perseverance and optimism. These last couple of years have been gruesome to us all, but somehow we've all managed to push through and defy all the odds. Standing here today is not a, it's not a small deal at all. By standing here today, some of us will break generational cycles and norms while also opting not to be another statistic in someone's data set. I'm proud of you all, and I expect nothing but greatness from the class of 2022. Whew. It's different from practicing in my room. <laughs> my time here at Dunbar has truly been an experience. Uh, these last four years, I've discovered things about myself that only one could imagine. Dunbar has tested my mental and physical limitations while also pushing me to on top a small proportion of the limitless potential I now realize I have. Dunbar has challenged me in areas I didn't know I needed to strengthen. Dunbar has also made me well aware of everyone's favor saying, there are consequences for your actions. But I've also learned that to every downfall, there is an uprising. Dunbar has given me opportunities only one could imagine. As a freshman in high school, I was exposed to multiple STEM-based college tours and fairs. Here, I discovered my true passion to partake in the career of architectural engineering. <laughs> I'd also connect with some of, I'd also, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Sorry. Where's where that, where's that? Whew. Here, I also, I'd also connect with some of the best faculty and staff members the city has to offer. Here, I was a multi-star athlete playing football, running track, I also tried basketball. I ain't really my strong suit, but I did it anyway. <laughs> uh, here, I've met people that will be my lifelong friends. I can truly say there's been more good than bad since enrolling at Dunbar. You can say what you want about Dunbar. We all know Dunbar got some bad rumors. But Dunbar has made me a better individual as well as paved the road for me to succeed in all categories. These are the opportunities that I'm thankful for as I'm going to school for free in the fall. Big shout out to the faculty and staff of Dunbar High School and the class of 2022 for making my experience here one for the books. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my moms. At, at this moment, Ma, can you please stand?
Through the thick and thin, this woman has been by my side and hasn't hesitated to give me the clothes off her back if need be. She exemplifies the definition of a strong black woman. On October 5th, 2020, my mom lost the love of her life as well as her lifelong partner, my dad. While struggling to manage her own emotions, she became the real definition of an independent woman and gave us comfort and unconditional love. While she was wiping our tears, she was drowning in her own, but it didn't stop her from being a mother. She was at every game. She attended every ceremony. She was at every boxing match. She was my sister's biggest investor. I used to think that my mom was a superhero, but I now realize that she's a goddess. Mom, I just want you to know that you are an amazing person and that you ace this motherhood stuff. And to my dad, I know you can't be here today, big guy, but I just want you to know that you did an amazing job with raising my siblings and I. I'm only one third of the legacy you leave behind, but just look at all my accomplishments and my accolades. Pops, I just want you to know that I haven't, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. I love you both, and I'm glad to call you guys my parents. One of the biggest lessons I've learned over the last four years was learning to accept help when it was needed. Many of us were either forced to grow up early or weren't able to enjoy our childhoods or even struggled in silence. Many of us have messed up backgrounds and were raised by some of the strongest fathers and mothers alive. Our circumstances have made us stern and numb to the greater good and the things that life has to offer. I was a prime example of this. I've lost my dad, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, all in a matter of 10 months. For a whole year, I was completely disconnected from my friends, my family, and all aspects of life. It was hard for me to accept the fact that I needed help. Luckily, I had a village of individuals behind me who were more than willing to help. Not, on, not because they gained anything from it, but because they genuinely believed in me, even though I was at the lowest moment of my life. I'm thankful for these individuals every day. With help, I was able to get back on the football field and would eventually earn the title of most valuable player for that year. With help, I got accepted into every school I applied for. With help, I was named All-American by the Washington Post Association. With help, I was blessed with the biggest opportunity of them all, to go to college debt-free. While I could go on and on about my accolades, that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is that with help, I was able to become the best version of myself. So I'll leave you all with this. Don't be afraid to seek help. Not everyone wants to see you fail in life. Life goes on with or without you, so you might as well take that risk. <laughs> and to the class of 2022, Loosen up, please. Live a little, and don't forget to take that risk. My father once told me that you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Let that sink in. I appreciate y'all for having me. Thank you. It's the young black king for me. Oh, Lord. Ooh. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen. And now, the official moment we've all been waiting for. I would like to have our principal, Nadine Smith, to the front for the awarding of diplomas. All right, class of 2022, this is your time. All right. I'd like you to please stand and you're gonna follow the directions of the ushers down to the stage area. Ms. Yates will return to the stage to read the names of the students. All right, hold, all right, folks, we're gonna get this, this last part in. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now complete the presentation and acceptance of the class. Instructional Superintendent, Dr. Kimberly Martin, thank you for joining me. And now, by the power vested in me by the mayor of the District of Columbia, Muriel Bowser, and by the Chancellor of the District of Columbia Public School, Louis Ferriby, I hereby certify that the 119 members of the class of 2022 have completed the requirements for graduation from the historic Paul Lund Dunbar High School. On behalf of Mayor Bowser and Chancellor Ferriby, I enthusiastically accept the class from Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. Congratulations. All right, this is the moment you all been waiting for. Graduates, let's get lined up. I don't need his name. I'm... Our valedictorian, Daquan Harvin. Salutatorian, Tomaje T.C. Crawford. Rob Acleo. Imani Nia Vance. Say cool, cool, Sidbury. I love you. Nakaya Richardson. Yeah. Morgan Wells. We got London on the track. London Powers. Kalia Threadgill. Akira Hill. Gary Murray. Jalen, baby J Hunter. Anthony, Aunt Patrick. I'm so proud of you. Krishan, Bell. Sanaya Brown. Daryl Smith. Adamari Mondragon Vasquez.
Javon Williams. Anaria Wideman. Dominic Harris. Angel Whitaker. Jasmine Simpson. Cindy Cruz. Zachary Wayne. Shanice Tillery. Talia Leitner. Rhea Gross. Daniel Dandridge. Takaya Boatwright. Makaya Cooper. Jaquan Gillis. Junie Brown. Chloe Lanson. Michael Hayes Jr. Kayla Cooper. Roger Avent. Makaya Graham. Taylor Armstrong. DeAndre Gore. Kenise Oates. Keandra Oates. Ahmad Walker. Dwayne Monroe Jr. Kanaya Short. Ayomide Odeyele. Makaya Jones. Makai Freeman. Shania Walker. Don't be sorry, get into it. Dania Jones. Oh, you iced out. Dorico Rico Johnson. Paris Henson. Demarius White. Anaya Parrish. Celicia Walker. Brianna Wiggins. Mackenzie Wack. I know how to say Isla Mia. Yakini. Kiana Jones. Sanai Brown. Amaya Brooks. Ashley Jones. Lola Simmons. Demi Grant. 
Christina Wilson. Reggie White. Eric Hickman. Krishaya Whitfield. Devin Davis. Tatiana Turner Bishop. Makai O'Neill. Kamari Campbell. Keyshawn Coleman. Nassim Brown. Mackenzie Lee Woodland. Amelian Franklin. Mia Gibbs. Ronald Wynn. Devon Williams. Amira Richard Hurley. <laughs> Samaje Tucker. Andrea Hicks. Rodney Schools. Dominique Damo Davis. Elijah Starkley. Michaela Bunn. Rayana Matthews. Jaquel Anthony. Kevin Ortiz. Damar Roberts. Michael Sims. Tanaya Kitt. Tatiana Jones. DeAndre Wooten. Wendelin Collins Brooks. Nayor Griffin Taylor. Trinity Roy. Dakota Delaney. Kylan Benson. Lillian Olivares. Miracle Milling. Tatiana Hines. Tamar Windless. Tanaya Barnes. Tykel Cutler. Dejana Banks. Marquez Minor. Michael Mike Brown Jr. Jaden Trice. Kayvon Lewis. What's up with you? What's up with you? Hey, Yana Surly. Rachel Addo. Taylor Webb. Jason Greer.
Jaleel Smith. Makai Farmer. Charlie Johnson the third. Cyrus Saunders. Tatiana Robinson. Angel Valentine. Michaela Fern. Akbar Balau. At this time, our final part of our program, I'll call to the stage Miss Carrie Thornhill from the mighty class of 1961 to administer our alumni oath. Thank you, Madam Principal. She remembered that I'm from the mighty class of 1961. Well, congratulations, 2022, and now is your time. You become one of us. If you will look on the back of your program, you will see the alumni oath. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly affirm as a graduate of Dunbar Senior High School to give without reservation mental and financial support to promote the educational and social growth of my alma mater, the historic Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and now you carry the banner and the legacy with you. Almost at the end. Graduates, this is it. All right, my last words to you as your principal, go forward, be the person you wish to be. You already know how we do it. Be bold, be courageous, be, com be compassionate, be passionate. Do the best you can. Class of 2022, please move your tassels from right to left. It, it gives me great it gives me great pleasure to officially welcome you to the family of the alumni of our nation's first black school, Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Congratulations, graduate. Thank you. Please stand and follow the ushers. Parents, please remain seated while graduates process out. Roll Tide.